Hello there. Today, we're cracking the seal on a brand new PC Mouse Systems mouse, hooking it up to an IBM 5160 and trying it out all for the first time. I've never even actually used a mouse on a 5150, and this was something I had been looking forward to for quite some time. So I hope you're ready to see a really weird and surprisingly good mouse all the way back from 1982. Oh, I've been waiting to try this thing for a while now, and I'm really looking forward to this today. This is my Mouse Systems PC mouse, and this particular example is unused, as far as I can tell. Uh, it is open, and we'll be going through everything in here, and it is unfortunately missing the PC Paint Plus copy that should have been included with this, but the mouse itself hasn't been used, and I'm pretty sure we can verify that uh, by just looking at it in a little bit here. But uh, I'm really excited about trying this thing out because as far as I'm aware, this is the first optical mouse for PC. Now, I would like to set the stage here by saying that this particular release, I believe is from 1986, if I remember correctly, uh, but this product was first available in 1982. But even this version being from 1986, it's still massively ahead of its competition. For example, this Logitech Series 9 serial mouse is a ball mouse, and this is from 1990. Even though this came out so much later in that one, it's still a ball mouse. It probably wasn't until the Microsoft IntelliMouse series mice that most people really got a chance to use an optical mouse. This kind of optical mouse works fundamentally differently than this kind does though, and we'll be talking about how exactly this one works because it's kind of interesting, and it took me a bit of digging to figure out exactly how it does. But one of the funny things about the Microsoft IntelliMouse is that it initially used a sensor from Agilent, that is HP that designed it. Although this Agilent mouse is actually just a rebrand of a different Logitech mouse, not this particular exact one, but it literally says Logitech right there. So there's a lot of weird and interesting stuff in the history of mice, like uh, novelty mice, but this one, is one I've been very interested in checking out. Now, before we get this open, there's some things that I should really cover on the box here because I love the taglines here. It's optical, it's 100% accurate, it's Microsoft compatible. That has to do with the Microsoft serial mouse that I actually don't have, uh, need to get one of those at some point. Uh, but no moving parts because it's optical, no cleaning because there's no ball, PC Bus Plus card. Now this is an important fact about this one. This particular mouse uses a dedicated ISA card to connect the mouse. There were different versions of this mouse that were used with different systems. This is more akin to the Sun Microsystems version of this mouse. And that's probably the one most people are familiar with when you think about the Mouse Systems mouse. The interface connection for this particular mouse might actually be the same as those. I'm not 100% sure. But many of these used an RJ45 connector on the mouse and then it plugged into an adapter that injected power externally along with the serial data connection to the computer. This one has a dedicated UART for the serial on it and injects its own power, that's probably an LM7805 on the card right there, to go into the mouse. So we need to install a dedicated card for our mouse on this computer. Now, these are examples of software that this was designed to work with. We have PC Paint Plus, which is the program that this would have come with. This is Lotus 1, 2, 3, and Microsoft Windows. Now, we're not going to try this with Windows today, so ignore that, but we are gonna try a couple of different DOS applications with this. Now, this uh, side view of the mouse, I find particularly hilarious because it shows the bottom side and the two different sensors on the mouse. That's right, two sensors. One of them uses red light and one of them uses infrared light. So only one of these would light up. When we get this out, we'll take a closer look at that because again, it's pretty cool how it works. With all that said though, let's actually get it open and take a look at it. All right, we have several manuals, one for setting up the mouse and one for the reference. Uh, and I pr am pretty sure that has to do with this, the designer pop-up menus. 
Now this, I believe, will give you the option to have like uh, shortcuts on the mouse for launching programs and stuff. I haven't tried this out yet. Uh, I have already backed up this disc, so that's on archive.org if anyone needs it. But our main event is right here. The mouse itself, as well as our mouse pad. So, this is a very strange mouse. Those switches are just, those are fantastic. That's better than some of the newer mice I have today. So that's the mouse, but then the mouse pad is just as important as the mouse itself is to getting this thing working. Oh, wow, that plastic has shrunk over time. Holy moly. All right, a perfect brand new mouse systems mouse pad. Hi. Now, in my opinion, how these two work together is what makes this whole package so cool. And I really want to show you how exactly it works. So we're gonna take the mouse apart and I'm gonna give you a really close up look on the mouse pad itself. I haven't even turned this thing on, but I'm just really excited <laughs> to see the inside because I do know what's in here and I find it just fascinating. Inside, we have two mirrors that are rather haphazardly placed. Uh, that's good to know. But they point at two different optical encoders. And actually, these are even better than the ones that I last saw. You can very clearly see that there are four different photoreceptive cells on each of these photosensors that are used to do the X and the Y positioning of the mouse. Up here, there are two different LEDs. This one should be the red LED, and this one should be the infrared LED. These are guided with the mirrors onto the photoreceptors that they're meant for, but also with the use of the mouse pad that acts as another mirror. If you get very close up on the mouse pad itself, you can see the grid on it is made out of black and blue lines for the different axes. Now you might be seeing these giant photoreceptors and seeing the tiny grid there and thinking, that doesn't line up, except that the plastic inserts that the LEDs are pointed in are rounded because they are magnifiers and they enlarge the grid itself to be the size of the photoreceptors. So as you move the mouse around, two of these sensors will be occluded by the grid lines and two of them should be exposed. This means that it can track when a sensor line, say in the middle, goes up or down by whether or not the space above or below it is suddenly occluded. So using that with the two different sensors, it can track lines moving up and down on this side and moving left and right on this side. Before I found that patent, I was trying to envision how this thing could work with a grid. And my initial thought was that there were four photoreceptor pixels that were in a square spaced out from each other, and that that square would be slightly bigger than the grid itself. When you would move the mouse relative to the grid, you would get two rapid pulses on the horizontal or vertical sensors, depending on which way you were moving it. And you would then know which direction the mouse was moving by looking at which two fired in sequence. And then you could have a timeout if the mouse was stopped or moving too slowly. However, both that method and the way that this mouse actually works share an inherent problem that this one is slightly more capable of solving. And that is, it wouldn't actually work like that because it is 90 degrees off axis of how it's supposed to be used with the PC. Matter of fact, this should be very sensitive to the mouse being slightly ankled and you should have to keep it perfectly aligned to the mouse pad. I don't know how bad that's gonna be in practice, but I'm curious to find out. Speaking of curious, we have one more part for this thing that is the bus mouse card and called it LM7805 supplying power to the mouse. Now I'm gonna mention as well that I found a technical reference document for this mouse setup that mentions that this serial port should actually be running at five volts. Normal RS-232 runs at 12 volts, positive and negative, whereas this one should be running at five, which tells me you wouldn't do good things to this mouse if you plugged it into a 12 volt serial port. Never mind, you just wouldn't be giving it power. The other thing that I looked up was to make sure this disc does actually have our drivers in it. So we should be able to get the mouse set up with that and then, I actually already have a copy of PC Paint Plus that thankfully was up on Winworld. So we're gonna be able to try that out. So 
let's go ahead and take this over to the IBM 5160 and install the PC mouse bus mouse. So it's time to add the PC mouse systems bus mouse to the IBM 5160 here. And this is like exactly the computer they envisioned you using this thing with. Down to the point where if we look in the manual and setup guide, it is just absolutely an IBM XT system here. It's hilarious. Um, so yeah, this is 100% what this thing is meant to be used with. So I am really looking forward to trying this thing out on here. I've actually been wanting to check out some probably graphic and mouse based software on this computer for a while. So finally getting a mouse on here is going to be really nice, but uh, we do need to get it set up, which is going to mean we have to put the card in and I'm realizing the card has jumpers on it. So I'm going to have to actually read the manual a bit to figure out how to configure those for what we need. Okay, after reading through the manual a little bit here, this is like one of the best peripherals ever because it comes with a specific program for telling you how to configure the card before you even put it in. So we just need to put in the driver disc and then we'll know how to set up the card. Everything should be like that. All right, we're ready to try this out. So I'm gonna put in the designer pop-up menus disc, which doubles as the driver disc as well, uh, into drive B here. And we're gonna see what bus set says about my system uh, to try and get this thing set up, I guess. All right, uh, let's dir what we got on here. All right, uh, I see bus set scrolling very far up. Holy moly, that's a lot of stuff. Um, I'm seeing a lot of things that were related to uh, software too. Like I saw a Lotus thing in there. So uh, it probably has uh, like software add-ons to make other programs work better with this. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but we need bus set to figure out how to configure the card. Okay, uh, we are a PC XT, but that's good to know that it'll work on a 5152 with the PC. Alrighty, uh, does your computer have any of the following assigned to COM1? Wait a minute, I thought the whole point of the program was gonna be that it would automatically configure this. You could have just had like a table and a manual if it's not gonna like figure it out for me. Um, so uh, thinking about it, uh, I do have my Tecmar Captain in there. It's probably configured to COM1 from when I was trying to mess around with GPID stuff on this computer last time. So yes, I don't think I have a COM2. Uh, probably have a parallel port one and definitely not a two. Okay, it has a hard disk. What about the jumpers requires changing hard disk settings? I don't, I don't know, okay. Um, yeah, that's correct, okay. Well, that's quite handy. It's just showing me where the jumper should go straight up on there, okay. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm also seeing that there are legends. I have them here as well. Uh, the X's and O's on here relate to COM1 and COM2. Uh, the card is pre-configured to COM2, which is what it's recommending me use anyway. So I, I guess I don't need to actually do anything. I can just pop it in there. Now I think theoretically I'd be safe putting this card pretty much anywhere. Uh, since this is a 5160 here, we actually have two slots north of the uh, floppy controller here. One of them is slot eight, which I don't think we want to use, but we can use slot seven here, which is still kind of blocked by the floppy controller or floppy drives. Uh, and then we'll have our <laughs> dedicated mouse port uh, pretty much as close to the keyboard port as we can get it. That's still a hilarious card to be installing. I, I kind of love that the case back on, but before I push it back, I'm gonna go ahead and get the mouse connected. Uh, I haven't mentioned this mouse uses the DV25 connector, <laughs> absolutely massive. So uh, we need the mouse pad here as well. And there we are. That is the <laughs> IBM 5160 with a mouse. That, that feels so wrong to have a mouse sitting here with this computer. I have not actually used any of these IBM systems with a mouse. To me, they've just been DOS text only computers. So this feels, this feels so, so wrong. <laughs> but all right, let's turn it on and see what happens. 
I was reading through the manual a little bit more off camera and there is a test program on the disc as well. So we should be able to just put the disc in and run test and then know if the mouse works immediately or not. So yeah, here's hoping that we have it all set up. Oh yeah, yes, oh, just like the box shows. We can totally see the red LED is on and I think I can barely see, yeah, the infrared one is on as well in there. It's really, really dim. But yeah, we can see the infrared one too. That's awesome. You can also just see how flawless these felt pads are. That's hilarious. I don't probably want to rough it up too much because old soft materials like that fail very easily. All right, let's put our driver disc back in. Actually, it's a little bit more than just a driver disc. It's like a whole complicated setup disc thing. Uh, switch on over to that and we'll run test. Let's see if the mouse is working or not. Okay, uh, F1 for COM1, F2 for COM2. That's what we're on. F4 for bus card plus. Okay, so that's actually us. F4. Ah, aha! Oh, yes! <laughs> that is super duper cool. <laughs> This is a mouse system's mouse. Oh, God. Oh, uh, lifting it. Oh, weird. Okay. So lifting it makes it go to the left. Uh, if I put it down again. Okay. So if I put it down again, then it stops moving left. Interesting. Uh, ooh, what's the angle capability like? So, okay. That's directly 90. Going a little more. Okay. Actually, that's pretty good. That's 45 degrees right there. Okay. Going a little more. Okay, we're losing it. Okay, so by 90 degrees, yeah, that's pretty unreliable. Okay. A horizontal actually kind of still works, but vertical absolutely does not. Okay. That's excellent. And we can see the bottom right, the mouse buttons. Yeah. Oh. All right. We have to try this with an actual program now. Okay. Um, but I think first we have to set up the mouse. And you know what? I'm not actually sure how we install the drivers. Um, so according to this, we just need to run MS Mouse C1 for the bus card plus card one. Wait, why would there be two cards? Can you have two mice connected? Why? Well, no, let's try, let's try this. MS mouse slash C1. Okay. Um, nothing's happening. I wouldn't expect anything to happen there. Let's try going into Word and see what it does. That's a fancy intro, Microsoft. Okay. Oh my God, it's a cursor. Oh, it's totally working. Oh man, dude, what is with that mouse cursor? That's crazy. I was not expecting it to look like that. I thought it was just going to be another block cursor. Oh man, that is awesome. It is. Okay, I'm just, there's just so many things occurring to me here all at once. Uh, this feels like ridiculously good and smooth. Like this is, this is nice. I have never had a vintage mouse feel this good. That's incredible. Wow. Okay, well, what do we, what do we do with that? Um... This is a typing test. Okay, so what can we do with this? Can we like select? <laughs> What's with the beeping? Oh, was I going? Oh, I was going off screen. Okay, so we can select text. Okay, okay, hold on. I think window here. Oh my gosh, I click the menus. Close uh, this one. Close, 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 close. <laughs> okay window oh man this is cool yes close okay <laughs> i'm enjoying this way more than i should so i've never used word this early before but these kinds of like ancient programs are really barbaric so in this case if you want to navigate these uh, normally you press escape and then it brings this up and then you have to press like the button uh, for the first letter, so window, and then you'd press C to close or whatever. Uh, so being able to just like grab the mouse and then just click around, that is, that's really cool. 
I don't really think I need to learn how to use Word, because um, that's not what we're here. Oh, it's doing the weird backwards mouse thing on the left side of the screen. <laughs> how many of you were always confused about that happening in Word? I didn't know it happened this far back into Word. That's hilarious. Uh, okay, I think we're going to quit this. Uh, I want to try PC Paint Plus and see if we can draw, because <laughs> that would be amazing. Paint. I don't actually know this software is going to work, so fingers crossed. Oh, score. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's drawing on a 5160. Oh, man. Okay. Wait a minute. Tools? What? Oh, oh, man. Okay. Hold on. We got, we got stuff to do. Hold on here. Okay. So what are we going to draw? Uh, let's draw the computer. Okay. So, oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's really wavy. Uh, I think it's me. Oh, I think I'm rotating the mouse. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's got the same problem there if I lift it. Oh, we can pick colors on the sides. Okay, so we're on black. Wait, do we have... Right mouse is a different color. Oh, now that's cool. Okay. There needs to be an undo. Edit. Oh, there is an undo. Whoa, okay. That's pretty cool. Ooh, wait a minute. There's line tools. Okay, let's actually try and make this good. Hold on. New screen. Uh, screen has been changed. Start a new picture. Yes. Okay. Dude, this is amazing. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Hold on. I got to save again. Save. Save. Yes. What does the move tool do? Oh, let's just pan. Does it just delete everything? No, actually it saves more detail. Oh, wow. Okay, there's one more program I want to try on here. KeyCAD 3.5, uh, because I think we can uh, do some CAD work on this as well with the mouse. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is... That's excellent. Okay, there should be buttons over here on the right. Um, maybe we don't get those because we're in CGA mode. I've mostly run this in Hercules mode. Uh, okay, draw. Let's go with rectangle. Clickety click. Yes. Okay. Let's design a car. So we're going to do... Uh, how about some lines? Okay, so... First off... Uh, this is 1986, so and there we go. We just catted up a car on the IBM 5160 using the Mouse Systems mouse. Well, that's been a look at the Mouse Systems mouse here with the infamous Mirror Grid mouse pad. I gotta say, it's pretty sweet. I was not expecting to like it as much as I would. I thought it would be a total pain, like you'd have to keep it perfectly angled or that it wouldn't actually respond that well. No, this thing is fantastic. I am shocked that we had a period of ball mouse. Like, why? This thing existed and was great. I'm sure this mouse pad gets easily scratched and then it doesn't work as well, but that seems like that would have been a better problem to solve than putting up with the horrible mouse balls the whole time. So I just, I can't believe that this isn't what won. But oh well. It was um, <clears throat> rather expensive. This package, I believe, was uh, over $300, but again, 1980s era mouse, not 1990s. So that cost definitely could have come down. But, oh well, at least I was able to go back and try it out now and just see how much better things could have been. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to subscribe to be notified when I release another one. If you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Patreon. But for now, that's it, and I will see you next time.